Howdy, hacksters! Welcome to Wednesday, and uh, we're reviving an old tradition called What the Wednesday. Oh, it looks like I'm a little bit jerky. Sorry. Uh, anyway, I've been playing around with learning how to actually use this fancy camera that I got for improving our video quality. Fancy that! And uh, one thing that I wanted to do was be able to trigger it remotely uh, so that I can mount it on a, an arm way over there and be able to... Uh, take photos and video and stuff from there. So this is a Canon Rebel T8i, and the connector that it has on here is a 2.5 millimeter TRS, or tempering sleeve. It may have more uh, connections, actually. I should shine a light in there and have a look. Uh, or like look in the advanced manual or something. I don't think they'll give me the... Anyway, anyway. So uh, it's a whole rabbit hole, but I hacked together a remote shutter controller because I couldn't wait to uh, order one and wait for it or like go to a store and stuff. I just wanted to get started. So this uses a 2.5 millimeter TRS uh, tip ring sleeve plug. And on the other end, I've got a couple of buttons, one of which controls the autofocus and the other one controls the shutter. Although that also does autofocus. Um, I learned many interesting things, such as if you autofocus a lot without pushing the shutter, it drains the battery really fast. <laughs> so uh, after a few of those mishaps, I have this strange little device, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how I put it together and uh, what exactly is the deal with these plugs. So I've got some cool diagrams that we're going to look at in a second. Um, first up, I'd like to show a project that I'm actually interested in building. It's a more complex version, an intervalometer, which allows you to take pictures with your camera, but with a built-in interval, like a uh, pause before it, which is really nice. It says it, it signals the camera to take a picture after some set interval. It's really useful for creating time-lapse videos. Cool. Someone used their TI-89 calculator to do that. That's brilliant. Because back in the day, uh, when I had a TI-80, whatever, TI-83 plus, I think, in high school for math, those used these same 2.5 millimeter cables uh, to transfer programs between uh, the different calculators. And we'd share games and stuff that way back in, you know, the olden times. Uh, anyway, so uh, I found this link from SparkFun's 2.5 millimeter 8 inch pigtail cable, which sadly is no longer in production. It's retired, but um, still a good source of, there's some interesting info in the comments down here, as you'll often find. So what is a TRS cable? I was looking at this uh, mission engineering page because I use them in a bunch of different ways. And I was wondering what sorts of standards there are because uh, there's actually TS cables as well as TRS and TRRS, which all of which I have on my desk today. So ta let's take a look. Um, first, we're going to look at the different types, uh, TS, TRS, and TRRS. And then we're going to take a look at different sizes. So as you can see, this is a quarter inch one. This is a, a 3.5 millimeter one or eighth inch. Um, which those may not actually be fully equivalent. But uh, here's another one that's from some headphones. And you can see that this one, so TRS literally stands for tip ring sleeve. So the tip, a ring in the case here, two rings here, and the sleeve. The sleeve is almost always ground, but there's some exceptions that we'll look at in a second. It turns out there's multiple standards for this boy over here. Um, very confusing. But when you see TRS or TS or TRRS, that's what that stands for. And it just uh, indicates the amount of connections. So this is typically used in, for example, uh, I have a guitar that I hook up to an amplifier. And that is a mono uh, connection. So it has one sort of uh, audio power and one ground connection. Although sometimes you'll have guitars with like multiple pickups and stuff, and sometimes you'll have extra connections. Uh, if you're doing stereo audio, you'll almost always have at least one ring, and that enables you to connect a left channel, a right channel, and ground. So you have separate uh, audio channels with a single shared ground connection. And then over here, uh, TRRS1, this one often includes a band for a radio, uh, <laughs> radio microphone. So you'll have left channel, right channel, and then microphone and ground are apparently sort of uh, mixed up in here. Ah, I drew a little diagram. And there's 
Oh, you know what? I didn't put the labels on here, but there's two standards, um, OMTP and CTIA, which, uh, in which these two are reversed. So one is mic and one is ground. And depending on what type of system you have, it could be one way or the other. And again, those are called OMTP and CTIA. I found a really cool link um, on an Australian website that I want to pull up. It sort of does a good job of explaining this because they make a bi-directional adapter to adapt between CTIA and OMTP. The nice thing is that basically what they've done is made a cable that flips these last two um, connectors. So it doesn't matter which way you're going, uh, either way, you're flipping them and it works. So it's a bi-directional cable, works fine. I wanted to bring up Spectacle, which we did a show on back in the day. Spark Fun's system for making props, wearables, lights, and things. Uh, and I thought this was really brilliant. I've thought of using this before for like NeoPixels and connecting them. You basically have this director board, a sort of driver board with the brains of the operation. One for hooking up lights, one for audio, one for motion, inertia, and buttons, and things like that. And uh, audio cables are just a really nice way to route electricity around because they're flexible and uh, durable. So I tend to use sort of cut up audio cables to route LEDs around on my bicycle, uh, which, you know, it's very, they come with this shell that's very durable and water resistant. And as long as you seal it up with a lot of heat shrink and hot glue, you're probably pretty good. Um, on a bike, the hot glue, you know, you got to be careful if you're going to somewhere hot because it can literally melt. I've had that happen. <laughs> um, this mission engineering page explains the different sizes well. Quarter inch jacks are usually referred to as quarter inch because 6.35 millimeter is not very glamorous or easy to say. 3.5 millimeter is approximately an eighth of an inch. 2.5 jack is approximately 3.30 seconds of an inch. And those are usually referred to in their millimeter millimeter diameters, which is so annoying. <laughs> I'm so sorry it's that way. We just have to deal with it. Um, and then there's another cool link below that's about how to hack a headphone jack that talk shows you sort of vaguely standard coloring for wires. But then again, I want to show you uh, what we have over here is a an audio cable with one end stripped. And uh, you know, I found a site that said that a standard is that the left channel will be green, the right channel will be red, and the ground will be bare copper or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's handy. Like, right, red, ring. Right is usually connected to the ring uh, on the jack. But no, alas, in this case, the red one is connected to the, sl the tip. So that is wrong in this case. So... Uh, I guess a main takeaway from this is never take anything for granted. I want to show you. Prove it. I will prove it to you. Uh, in this case, we hook up one to the red wire, and then we touch it to the ring, which if that were correct, it would be... Nope. But here, our resistance goes way down, indicating that it is a uh, continuous connection. So red on the tip here, and then we've got this white one that connects to the ring and not to the tip. They're not just all jumbled up together. They're actually... So always check, always check which type of TRRS you have, depending on which uh, one of those two standards it is. Always check which wire connects to which part of your headphone jack. Uh, Tariq asks, what's the process to make one? So I've hacked together a few different um, why isn't my banner showing? There we go. Uh, I've hacked together a few different types of cables before, and you can get these uh, adapters, these things to make your own little TRS cables. Uh, and often what you'll end up with is <laughs> this side is sort of the inverse of that side. So, you know, uh, the part that sticks out furthest on this side is often, oh, you know, that's actually a lie. So this is a, a stabilizer part, and it may also be connected to the sleeve, which it is in this case. And then you've got the two inner wires broken out in a sort of concentric circle pattern, mirroring what happens on the other end. 
And so uh, with these, it's sort of like with heat shrink, you have to make sure before you solder things together that you have this sleeve already slid onto the other end of your wires. And that's going to screw down onto... Ah, the little collar on here is getting the better of me. Okay, and then you're going to screw that down onto the thingy there. And you'll see some like professional cables. This isn't very well bent. <laughs> you'll see some professional cables that you can unscrew as well. Uh, I've got some adapters. You can often find adapters to adapt between different sizes of things. In this case, we've got a couple of eighth inch to quarter inch ones. These are both stereo. And then here's a stereo quarter inch to eighth inch. I was digging through my various uh, boxes here and I found an eighth inch to uh, 2.5 millimeter. So 3.5 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter. And here's another one of those ones where you can make your own cable. This should unscrew. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and you can see the contacts in there that you would solder to. And then you, again, screw this on. It's got a nice little flexy thing to protect the cable connection. What's this? Oh, this is like a, no, this is a different type. This is like a coax type of thing. Barrel jack. Um, and then, you know, there's a bajillion different types of these adapters that you can get. I wanted to show you a couple more interesting ones. Um, so besides the 2.5 inch or 2.5 millimeter one that the camera uses, which I'll show you in a second, um, there's also this one for my ham radio. Where is the, uh, here we go. Um, and it has a standard that includes both 3.5 and 2.5 millimeter ones in the same uh, connector. So if you grab this, this is a, um, Hello? Do we have audio? Sorry about that. Okay, it looks like we've got audio again. Okay, cool. <laughs> Terrifying. I'll have the uh, desk cam up for you again in a second. Sorry about that. Do, 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 do. Webcam. All right. So, back to this. Uh, we're not quite perfectly set up anymore, but <laughs> today is technical difficulty day. This is basically something that I bought in order to be able to listen, plug in headphones to the radio without having it uh, on full volume uh, if I wanted to go on long bus trips, which I was going on a bus trip from, what was it, Phoenix to Calexico last year. And I wanted to listen to the what, you know, if I could connect to anything with this radio while I was on the way, but I didn't want to have the speaker on on the bus. So you can get these things. You can also get a pro uh, cable that programs this radio that uses the same interface uh, and the same thing with two TRS connectors. One of them is 3.5 millimeters and one is 2.5 millimeters. Really interesting. Speaker and mic. So you can get one that's just the mic that's a that's a 3.5 millimeter one, but yeah. And finally, I wanted to demo this for you um, because it's fun and I'm proud. <laughs> it doesn't look like much, but this cable uh, makes my life a lot easier. And now the disc is covered in stuff. So I plug that in over here, I turn this on. And we've got a macro lens on here, so it's super close up. I'm gonna push the autofocus. And then I'm gonna take, oh, we're on video. No, stop. Okay, still learning this, but we're gonna do the autofocus. And take a photo. Unfortunately, you can't see the autofocus very well because this other one is autofocusing. <sighs> Technical difficulties. Uh, it sort of destroyed my manual focus things when our video went out. But anyway, you can see that it does do the job. 
Uh, and I'm really curious about this further tutorial that I mentioned before from Trevor <laughs> on how to build an intervalometer so that you can take really fancy pictures um, with your little 2.5 millimeter connector for a Canon. Not all cameras have the same connector. Not all audio stuff has the same connectors. There's nothing given from what I've learned. Uh, there don't seem to be any consistent standards. Plus these things are used across a bunch of different inter industries, including radios, cameras, headphones, etc. You know, big instruments and tons of other industries as well that I don't directly interface with, but also use this type of connector. So uh, again, always check, but uh, I hope that this has been an interesting uh, peek into the world of TRS. Oh, two more things. Um, when you strip these cables, I'd like to show you what uh, it looks like inside in some cases, and also uh, one of the channel challenges. So uh, when you're working with these as a hardware tool, a couple of things may come up. So uh, this is twisted together. Usually, uh, this is um, throughout the rest of the cable, I think this is wrapped around the rest of the wires and or they all may be inside of another sheath that will protect the whole thing from interference. Let's take a look. It's been a while since I opened this one up, but there's two things that you'll often see. One of them is like a, a film, a metallic foil sheath. Ah, oh, like this, yeah. And that seems to be just for shielding. And in this case, actually, this is a separate wire. So that's your ground wire. And this stuff you can just sort of trim away and discard. And this is your ground. Uh, let's see if the other one is any different, actually. Here's a much longer one that I got because I wanted a lot of wire to strip and use for bike lights. Oh, no, that's actually... OK, no, yeah, here we have the second type that I was talking about. And that is where your ground wire is kind of a mesh that's wrapped around, twisted around the other wires. And in that case, you can just sort of twist it up further and you end up with your ground connection. Those are both interesting um, different ways that the wire can be shielded. So you want to make sure that you're not using a really tight fit on your wire stripper so that you don't cut that ground wire and you want to make sure you have plenty of that. Uh, second thing to be aware of is that sometimes there's like an enamel coating on these. Like these are both shielded in, in plastic mostly, but uh, you'll also see ones on smaller systems where the internal wires look shiny and they are coated in enamel and that can make it really hard to solder to them because of that enamel coating. And in that case, what you can do is just use a barbecue grill lighter one of these guys or a lighter or you know a butane torch or whatever and just use that to burn the enamel coating off if it's on there and sometimes that will enable you to solder to the wire not always but sometimes i think this might have been for some reason it didn't want to be soldered to for whatever reason anyway but yeah <laughs> we are autofocus to autofocus yes this is, this is my life my life is all autofocus right now All right, so thank you again for joining me in this foray into uh, tippering sleeve world. Hope you've learned something. Uh, drop any requests for future What the Wednesdays. I've got a huge list, but uh, always curious to know what people actually want to learn about. And in the meantime, uh, we'll see you soon and hack on. <laughs>